So in order to show uh, the interaction between the virtual world and the real world, I created a small prototype using a very common uh, RoboSapien. And uh, so it's a very cheap robot. And also uh, I was about to create the hardware uh, in order to send the infrared command. And finally, I found something existing, uh, USB uh, UIRT, uh, that I use for that. I also created a small API uh, in order to control the robot. And then on the top of that, I uh, put interaction uh, between uh, the virtual world and the real world on StoryBaker. So I have several layers. So the robotics API actually that I created can be used within other applications. So, and of course, right now I'm using infrared just because uh, it was a very fast prototype that I needed to create very quickly, but we can imagine a lot of other solutions using wireless and other solutions. Okay, so basically what I wrote here is then Michel kicked the robot on the beach. So you will see the actor running on the beach, uh, kicking the robot, a virtual robot, and then the kick will arrive to the real robot and the robot will complain uh, on the uh, virtual actor. So it shows you kind of interaction of example of what we could do with interactions. Okay, so then Michel kicked the robot on the beach, and then I type the period. So I see the man running, and the heat is received by the robot, and now the robot is complaining, and so on. So you can imagine a lot of fun stuff for kids, and they can play around, and so on. Okay, so here is another example in which uh, now I have video that is synchronized with what's happened uh, in the real world. And that's another example of what we could do. Uh, instead of having interaction, we could have something that is synchronized and so on. So here is just a small example. So now I'm writing uh, once upon a time a robot grabbed a cup and the real robot has a cup uh, near his leg. And so, as soon as I type the period, I should have an, a video here of the robot grabbing the cup, and at the same time, uh, the real robot is doing the same things uh, in synchronization. So let's do that. So now the robot yeah. is clicking the cup, and at the same time I have the video. And now if I write the next part of my story, uh, then the robot walked. So now I have my robot walking. And uh, now I write the next part of my uh, story. Then uh, the cup was thrown by the robot, for instance. So now I have the robot throwing the cup. Oh, you, you, you. So in addition of what I showed you before, I also invented a tool that allows to create new actions. Indeed, if you look at the tool, one scalability issue we might have is that uh, an action is missing. So then how do you sketch new actions and so on? So here this tool allows to use tablet PC in order to, ske uh, to uh, sketch new actions. So for so instance, here if I sketch on the robot, I can move the robot around and actually at the same time it applies to the real, wo real world robot. So let's say if I sketch here, so I raise the arm, I will have the robot that raises its arm and so on. At the same time, I can also record, so let's say if I want to record the action. So let's suppose I want to create a new action that means uh, cheers, which means maybe uh, raise your both arm or something like that. So if I sketch here, now I click on recording, I sketch here. So that will raise, uh, for instance, I want to raise both arms. And now I say, okay, I stop recording. And I want now to play back these actions. So I click on playback. So first of all, the robot reinitialized. And now it will start playing back uh, the action uh, cheers that I just created. And so then this action actually can be applied not only to this robot, but also to other actors as well, because we track the position of everything and so on. So that's uh, a way to scale in, uh, in number of actions. If actions are missing, you can sketch your new actions and then apply uh, in your tool in the virtual world as well as in the real world.